Anytime you look out into the cosmos, you're looking into the past. We see the moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago. The light from nearby stars is decades or centuries old. And when we look at other galaxies, we're seeing them as they were millions or even billions of years ago. But what happens if we look farther than that? Can we look so far away and so far into the past that we see the primordial fire of the Big Bang itself? The answer is yes, we absolutely can. The basic idea of the Big Bang theory is fairly straightforward. If the universe is expanding now, it must have been smaller in the past. If you take the expansion we see now and reverse it, you eventually find that everything we see in the cosmos today, all the matter and radiation, must have been compressed to an unimaginable degree. The more you squeeze matter together, the denser and hotter it becomes. At some point in the past, the universe must have been so dense it couldn't contain the kind of matter we see today. Everything must have been an ultra-dense soup of hot, roiling plasma. The cosmic microwave background is a faint glow of microwave radiation coming to us from everywhere in the sky. It's not from stars or nebulae or galaxies. It's the light coming to us from that primordial plasma, showing us what the universe looked like 13.8 billion years in the past. The easiest way to picture this is to think of the early universe as an inside-out star. Imagine that you're somewhere in space in the first few moments of existence. The cosmos is filled with hot plasma, and it's so hot that nuclear reactions are happening everywhere around you. This process is called Big Bang nucleosynthesis, and it's how the first helium nuclei are forming. All of space is like the core of a star, with hydrogen fusing into helium. Because the plasma is so dense, photons, particles of light, are constantly bouncing off of protons and electrons and can't travel very far. But the universe keeps expanding and that plasma keeps spreading out. As time passes, it's like you're moving from the dense core of a star to its more diffuse edge. Eventually, after about 380,000 years, the spreading plasma gets so diffuse that photons are able to fly free. After that, light can travel through space, like the light at the edge of a star shining out into the cosmos. The place where that happens in a star is called the photosphere. But the early universe had something like a photosphere too. We call it the surface of last scattering, because from our perspective, as time and distance are intertwined, it looks like a surface, the most distant surface of light we can see. Today, if we look far enough in any direction, we can see that surface 380,000 years after the beginning of the universe. Even though it would have been blindingly bright in the visible part of the spectrum at the time, the light has been stretched out and diffused by the expansion of the universe, so it's only a faint microwave background at about the same wavelength and intensity everywhere by the time it reaches us. There's another clue that the light really is from that hot primordial plasma, and it has to do with the spectrum of the light, the intensity of light at different wavelengths or colors. If you turn on an incandescent light bulb and then spread the light out in a spectrum, the pattern it makes is called a black body spectrum. That spectrum shape is the same for anything that glows with heat, with the color at the peak determined by the temperature. Hotter things glow with bluer light and cooler things with redder light. Even you emit a black body spectrum due to your body heat, with the light peaking in the infrared, unless things are going very badly for you. The cosmic microwave background is the most perfect black body ever measured. It really is a direct view of the universe as it was when every part of it was glowing with heat. CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background, is an extremely valuable probe uh, of the universe. In the past decade, we measured uh, tiny variations in the distribution of the CMB photons, and this told us so much about the contents of the universe, the inventory, that is, different components like dark matter and baryons and all these interesting things. In the next decade, our surveys will have enough precision to treat the Cosmic Microwave Background as a backlight. In doing so, we will be able to combine the CMB surveys with galaxy surveys, uh, internal learning a lot about um, the distribution of matter and how it impacts these CMB photons as they travel uh, from the initial surface uh, to our telescopes. So these methods I develop uh, will enhance uh, our ability to connect uh, the earliest nuances to the cosmic structures we see around us today. You might be wondering, what's beyond the cosmic microwave background? The short answer is that we don't know. The CMB is the farthest we can see with light. 
gravitational waves, ripples in space itself, could one day provide clues a bit beyond that. But there is a limit. It's not a true edge, and there's nothing really special happening there, as far as we can tell, but there's an edge to our observable universe called the particle horizon. It's the farthest we can possibly see into the distance, with light or anything else, because anything traveling at light speed from beyond that point would take longer than the age of the universe to reach us. There simply has not been enough time. If you were standing on a planet in another galaxy, you would see your own version of the CMB. Everyone's observable universe is a sphere centered on them, their own bubble of space with their own collection of galaxies that may or may not overlap our own. Each one of us is surrounded by concentric shells of cosmic time, each shell going deeper into the past. And the very last shell is fire.